This is not a, a normal science story. This is a slow science story. <laughs> um, I encountered this material accidentally when I was a graduate student in my um, thesis rocks, which were for an un unrelated purpose. So um, yeah, it was just an accident. Found a tiny little group of um, very interesting material uh, that I realized didn't quite fit in with all of the much older uh, type of textures that I was finding in my rocks. Kind of thought that I understood what it might be, but I couldn't prove it. And because it wasn't the focus of my PhD research, I was able to have the luxury of putting it aside for later consideration. And that's what I did. So uh, that was the beginning of it. It's, a, it's a, an unusual type of information that you get from looking at thin slices of rock under the microscope. And when I looked at them, I was looking for evidence of you know, cyanobacteria. Australians know what stromatolites are. I was looking at stromatolites. Um, anyway, what I saw was little um, patches of a texture that um, branches, little tubes that branch and rejoin to form a very complicated three-dimensional meshwork. And um, that meshwork was so complicated in the, the anastomosis or the branching and the rejoining that it, it really was not compatible with an interpretation as bacterial or even algal or fungal. And instead it really closely resembled uh, much younger sponge fossils. But I couldn't prove it at the time. I needed more material. So I went back, you know, when I became a professor and had my own grant, I collected more material. And um, I also had to wait for the, the status of studies on the sponge fossil preservation to, to, you know, mature. I was waiting for other people's excellent work to be published. And so that all eventually came together in early 2021. And I felt comfortable with publishing my own comparable material that's much older. They are animals. They um, ingest other organic matter for their their energy and their nutrients. Um, they filter feed. That's how they take organic matter out of seawater. They're 890 million years old approximately. And actually that's not really as surprising as you might think. It seems pretty shocking at first because that's about 350 million years older than the next youngest comparable material. But um, there's a, a method of predicting the time of the appearance of major organism lineages called molecular phylogeny, which I'm not an expert in. Um, and that shows that, um, or it um, estimates that the sponge lineage of animals probably appeared around between a billion and 800 million years ago. So in fact, it would not be that surprising to find sponge-like material in rocks as old as the rocks I was looking at. Um, so the age of the material is actually not as shocking as you might initially think. What's really challenging, though, for at least some people is the fact that the time is before two major events in Earth history that have previously been assumed to be to have been important for animal evolution. One of them is an oxygenation event that took place sometime after 830 million years. And the other one is the cryogenian glacial episodes, which were a time when, you know, potentially a large part of the Earth was uh, glaciated and which may have interrupted biological evolution. So in placing my um, possible sponges at a time prior to both of these events, it really kind of um, shakes the apple cart a bit. It doesn't really overturn it though.